Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sydney, and if you are new here, this is just a place where we talk about true crime, conspiracy theories, scam stories, cults, spooky shit. You want it? We got it. So, last time we were here, we talked about the Sally house, which was was a lot. That was our first ever haunting. And this week, we are gonna talk about something a little bit different. Today, I'm gonna be covering three different TV station hacks. Now, I think one of them you're probably gonna know about, it's very famous, but the other two are things that I've never heard of really much at all. So I hope that you guys enjoy. And if you do, make sure to like and subscribe. So the first TV hacking we are going to be talking about is the Max Headroom incident. Newscaster Dan Rowan was covering the most recent Chicago Bears win when all of a sudden at 9.14, the picture and sound suddenly cut out. After 15 long, silent seconds, a person wearing a Max Headroom costume with a spiraling, swirly black and white background appeared on the screen. It was creepy because there wasn't any talking during this hacking. It was just an eerie, weird buzzing sound. McMahon and McKinnon, 14 nothing Bears. Then the defense, which hadn't put up a sack in 12 quarters, finally did. This imposter just like danced around the screen really creepy for 30 seconds before the news channel was able to take back control over their transmission and go back to their normally scheduled program. A very confused Dan Rowan came back onto the screen and said, well, if you're wondering what happened, so am I. If you're unfamiliar with who Max Headroom as a character is, that's okay because I had literally no idea. So let's talk about this character. So Max Hedrum was a character who aired on um, ABC in a show from 1987 to 1988, so a pretty short run. So this show was kind of like a sci-fi type show, so Max Hedrum's character was basically a parody of the main character, and he was just this AI-generated sort of bot, I would say. Well, Max Hedrum was not a main character on this show, he was probably the most popular as he was used as sort of the comic relief in that show. This incident was not isolated, as later that same night, the second hacking occurred. So it was around 11.15 on Channel 11, and they were rerunning a Doctor Who episode. This incident was much longer than the first, a whopping 1 minute and 22 seconds, and this time, the hack had audio. Max Headroom came right back on screen, and again, he had the weird background behind him, and this time, it was sort of a distorted voice that was speaking. This distorted voice commented that he was much better than Chuck Swirsky, I hope I'm saying that right, Swirsky, who was actually one of the main newscasters on Channel 9. Throughout this entire hack, the Max Headroom imposter kept commenting and making fun of WGN, which was Channel 9's station name. At one point, he started singing and humming. He even flipped off the camera at one point and started doing a bunch of like lewd gestures, which was probably very startling for people that were just trying to watch Doctor Who. I'd be scared jealous. This broadcast lasted much longer than the previous one because there was nobody actively monitoring Channel 11 at that time since it was so late at night. What was also different is that the hackers actually cut the transmission once they had done everything that they needed to do. And so really the only people that got a glimpse at this strange hacking were the people that happened to be watching and or recording that episode of Doctor Who. The people of Chicago went wild for this. They called this hacker a TV video pirate. The FCC commented that if these hackers were caught, they could face up to a year in jail and a, as much as a $100,000 fine. This was not a petty crime. This is considered a federal crime. So if caught, they could be facing a lot of consequences. The FCC also found out that the hackers didn't actually need high-tech equipment to make this hack. As long as they had a good antenna in the right position, they could have easily hacked. Although no one has ever been charged for this crime, there are a few suspects that we'll talk about. So the first one uh, surfaced in 2010 when a Redditor commented that he knew two brothers named J and K and that they had allegedly committed this hacking. This Redditor stated that the brothers had told him to watch the Doctor Who episode to see the hacking, 
And although this seems like kind of solid evidence, I mean, it was on Reddit, so maybe not, but these suspects were ultimately ruled out. So back to square one. Another option that wasn't looked into heavily, but I think is most likely the culprit behind this whole hacking deal might have been some of the employees that had gotten laid off from WGN a few months prior. Since in the second incident, the mask, the Max Headroom imposter talked a lot about WGN and making fun of them and that sort of thing, it seems like that would have been the most likely suspect, would be somebody who knew WGN and worked for them. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> All right, guys, we are going to be talking about our second hacking, which is more commonly known as would you could you on a train. Let's get into it. Let me tell you the tea, girl. On September 28th of 2016, during a newscast on WKTV coming out of Utica, New York, a message began to scroll across the top of viewers' screens. I want to get this direct quote for you guys because it's pretty creepy. This message read, Civil authorities have issued a hazardous materials warning for the United States, effective until September 29th at 2.16 a.m. Would you, could you, on a train? Wait for further instructions. So imagine, come with me on a little journey. It's been a long day. You get home, you turn on the news, and you're just chilling, hearing about the wars, hearing about the deaths, and all of a sudden there comes that blaring meh, meh of the emergency service because this was through the, the emergency service system. It was an emergency broadcast. All of a sudden you see a message that's like hazardous materials warning. Would that not be the scariest shit you've ever heard? And then you just see, would you, could you on a train? Wait for further instructions? Like, what does that mean? People were definitely like weirded out, obviously. It was weird. WKTV later posted on their socials that this was just a tester message and it wasn't actually meant for public viewing, but it was sent out by FEMA just as a test. They also stated that they were actively working with emergency services and they would give further updates and make sure that everything was in the clear. However, this message was sent out again at 10.38 p.m., the scrolling message, would you, could you on a train? During this time though, FEMA confirmed that although this is one of their codes that goes along with their messages, FEMA has their own set of codes for each you know, emergency, that although it was one of their codes, this was not a message sent out by FEMA, but instead sent out by a hacker. So as FEMA and WKTV continued to figure out what was happening and just trying to get to the bottom of this hack, something tragic happened. The following day, September 29th, 2016, was a morning like any other. People got up, got ready for work, and hopped on a commuter train that started in Spring Valley, New York, around 7.30 a.m. The journey continued on like normal until about 8.45 a.m. As the train began to pull up to the station, instead of slowing down, it began speeding up. It went from about eight miles an hour to 21 miles an hour, and the passengers knew that something was wrong immediately. As the train came crashing into the barrier at the station, people were thrown, there was metal everywhere, debris began to fall from the ceilings, and a lot of people got really, really hurt. This devastating event ended up injuring 100 people and even killing one woman. After the initial crash, the entire train went dark. People covered in dust and blood had to climb out of the train and get to safety themselves. It was horrific. As investigators started to dig deeper into this strange crash, it was found out that the train conductor had been working for the company for about 29 years. Officials determined that the conductor's untreated and undiagnosed sleep apnea, as well as not having the proper safety measures like a safety stop, was the ultimate cause of the crash. Although this event was awful, so awful, and traumatic for so many people, it did help ultimately improve safety standards on these trains, making it safer for everybody's commute. 
to this very day. So of course, these events being so close to each other, people began and continue to speculate about how these incidents might coincide with one another. Was this an innocent prank by hackers that just happened to coincidentally line up with a deadly train crash? Or is it something more sinister? Well, let's talk about it, because it's kind of weird. Some of these, m let me rephrase that. All of these conspiracies are very out there. I definitely think it's weird that this just happened to kind of line up the way it did. Whether it's all connected, I'm not 100% sure, but these theories are kind of out there, so just be aware before we jump into it. But our first theory is that would you, could you on a train was some sort of MK Ultra sleeper agent phrase. Some people think when that hazard warning came across the screen that it awoke some sort of mission in certain people that had been part of MK Ultra to complete this train attack. For what reason, we're not sure, but that is a theory that it's out there. Others went to the source of the message to try to find some answers. Would you could you on a train comes from the infamous book Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. Most people have read this book. A classic, okay? A classic. So as most of you know, the main character's name in Green Eggs and Ham is Sam. So people think that since Sam, Uncle Sam, it's all connected, the government's behind it. People speculate so much like about, you know, Green Eggs and Ham has 50 words. There are 50 states, blah, blah, blah. We could conspire for hours and hours about how you know, it's strange that these two events happen so close to each other. It's strange that this message happened. I think whether it's connected or not, it's definitely eerie that an attack happened the very next day. This is definitely a cryptic message and whether it's connected or not, it's just scary. It just sends a chill down your spine because obviously you wouldn't just write would you could you on a train for no reason. Like whether it's connected or not, there has to be some sort of reasoning behind it and we'll most likely never know why. So that's unsettling. So the last TV station hack we are gonna be talking about today occurred on November 26th, 1977. Newscaster Andrew Gardiner had just started reading the headlines for the five o'clock news on a program called Day to Day. This broadcast was put out by a company called Southern Television who had coverage in the southern part of England. At around 5.10, the audio of Andrew Gardner suddenly cut out and the picture on everybody's TV started to get wobbly. All of a sudden, a distorted, creepy voice came through everybody's TV set, probably sending shivers down their spine because absolutely creepy as hell. This hacker claimed to be brilliant, representing the Ashtar Galactic Command. This is the voice of Grimar, representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. The new age can be a time of great peace and evolution for your race, but only your rulers are made of general forces and can overshadow their judgments. Be still now and rest, for your jobs may not come again. They spoke urgently of the need for us as a human race to stop all the wars, stop all the fighting, and just to become peaceful. And that way we can evolve to a higher plane of existence. They also stated that we were not alone as a species on this planet and that the galactic command could be seen as lights in the sky. Brilliant finished their message by saying, have no fear, seek only to know yourselves and live in harmony with the ways of your planet Earth. We here at the Ashtar Galactic Command, thank you for your attention. We are now leaving the planes of your existence. May you be blessed by the supreme love and truth of the cosmos. So though Brillian wasn't speaking ill of anything or anyone really, they were just trying to get their message across, whether they were an alien or not, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But it was kind of a sweet message. It wasn't evil. It wasn't menacing or anything like that but of course viewers were really scared they didn't know what was happening and this went on for a solid six minutes Verlian was a talker as this hack went on the station was trying to desperately cut the transmission and get their audio back with 
the news program that they were trying to put on. However, Verlian finished up their message and everything returned back to normal. The audio cut back in and the image became clear and it was Andrew Gardner back at his business reading the news. It stated that around 500,000 households saw this message as it was a pretty popular program. Like I said, a lot of people were kind of creeped out, so Southern TV were scrambling to find the source of this hack. And a few days later, they stated that they had found out the source of the hack, but they weren't going to release this information to avoid a, another hack from happening in the future. Mystery solved. Kind of. Some speculated that the hackers must have used a remote transmitter of Southern TV because it would have been easier to hack than somewhere more busy and more populated. So that is a theory that some people have as to how the attack could have been performed. So we have two obvious theories here. We're gonna talk about both of them. The first one is obviously hackers. Like I said before, it would have been really easy for somebody to hack into Southern TV's more remote transmitters. And maybe they just had a message that they wanted to give to people. They wanted to, you know, get people's attention and posing as an alien was probably the best way to do it. It worked. People were glued to their TVs because they were freaking freaked out and scared, but it did work. People were paying attention to what Verlian was saying. Although this was more in the 70s, People were still trying to spread messages of peace and love to people, and this was definitely a, a unique way to do it, although it might not have been right in the public's eye. I think kind of heroic. I don't know. I kind of like it. So the second theory is, of course, aliens. Duh. Usually when we hear about people being abducted by aliens or having any sort of alien encounter, we usually hear that the aliens told whoever they abducted that humans need to be more peaceful and they need to stop fighting. So this is pretty on brand. If we were thinking this is a real alien, it's pretty on brand that they would give messages to people to spread around the world for the better good of humanity. Whether this incident was completed by hackers or by aliens, it doesn't matter. It's interesting to talk about and the fact that evidently the tv station knows the source but won't tell us is also interesting is this real proof of aliens we may never know well guys that is all i have for you today i really hope you enjoyed this kind of different format of video with these shorter stories combined into one video let me know what you guys think of it i'm really interested in these kind of stories because you hear about them a lot but you never really experience them so to kind of dig deeper into them and realize how scary that must have been for people watching the TV program. Two of these happened a pretty long time ago. The would you, could you on a train is a lot more recent. So it's interesting that it can still happen today. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If not, that's cool. You don't have to. But I hope you guys have a beautiful, wonderful, amazing rest of your day and continue to be the bad bitches that you are. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.